you need you need time, money, and skills, right? Yeah. So what do you have out of the three? And if you don't have those three, don't quit your job, yeah. right? What's up, guys? Today we have special guest Jason Santos. Jason is a serial entrepreneur and real estate investor. Started with a little Hawaiian shape ice food truck, and then now you're here. So it's kind of funny that I'm in Hawaii, and it always kind of goes back in my head, like, "Ooh, that's kind of cool." Like, you know, that's how it all started. The was. first start. So I mean, so tell us. So like, you started off as an entrepreneur doing some a food truck, some restaurants, and now you're investing in a crazy amount of real estate now. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you my story. So in 2016, I. Uh, came here and we're always here every year with the family, mm-hmm. with my wife. Um, and I got fell in love with Matsumoto, right? Okay, Matsumoto Shave Ice. Yeah, famous, a, famous wine Shave Ice. It, space if you guys it's don't like know. you gotta come here yeah. if you're if if you're in Hawaii. Uh, um, so uh, at that time, I was like, man, they're selling these these Shave Ice for like six, seven dollars, right? <laughs> and I'm like thinking, this is just water and sugar. <laughs> the markup is huge, right, on the, on the materials, yeah. right? Yeah, so we end up uh, opening up one in California, and it's called Nokooi Shaved Ice. Oh, I love it. it From yeah. the Maui, right? Yeah, yeah. It's like called, it's Nokooi means the best, right? Yeah. So we had to keep that name. We got it wrapped, and, um, you know, we were, man, we were killing it, like, summertime. Really? But the problem on that one is winter season. Okay. It so it's a, it's a very seasonal business. Very seasonal yeah. business. Um, but you know, we were at a lot of festivals and, you know, mm-hmm. July 4th festival and, mm-hmm. you know, we're, I mean, it's, it's was, just, fun. was that, was that like your first, um, journey into entrepreneurship? It, it okay. is. Um, what, what were you doing before that? I was in sales for about 10 years. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I was, working uh, W2 I was well. working at W2 of Verizon okay. and, you know, long story short, I kind of, you know, cashed out my 401k and, you know, mm-hmm. end to, up. to start the business. Exactly. Exactly. I think that's, what, I think one thing that people don't realize about small businesses is the, you, they see like the margins, okay, there's just water and, and syrup, right? So like there's a big margin there, but there's, you got to pay for like your location, your marketing, your other people you're hiring, all these other costs, accounting, like bookkeeping. There's all these extra costs that are associated with a small business that people don't realize. Exactly. So when when you have the vision, mm-hmm. you only see the beginning and the end. <laughs> yeah. right? The in between is the unknown. Yeah, right? yeah. And then when you get encountered to solving problems, that's all we do. Right. Mm-hmm. We solve problems in our businesses. And then once you get into that, I mean, like most people end up like quitting because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's too hard. Either they don't have support yeah. or either their spouse is not supporting them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. and their friends too, right? I, f- I mean, so I mean, when you, when you say that, I hear this all the time, right? And I say this myself is we're in the business of solving problems, right? As an entrepreneur. Yeah. But I think like, so you hear it so often, it's kind of cliche. But then people don't realize, like, no, literally, like, every single day, you're solving, like, a new, a new problem. It's, like, a new <laughs> problem, too. It's not always, like, the same ones. It's, like, constantly, constantly, consistently solving new problems. It's just, like, the name of an entrepreneur. Yeah, I mean, the one thing that I do recommend to new entrepreneurs mm-hmm. is um, put out the fire right away. Mm-hmm. Because when there's going to be more problems tomorrow, next week. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. If you don't solve that problem now, it's yeah. all going to pile up, right? Yeah. And then that stress going to end up killing you or making you quit or lose out of business, right? That's a really good piece of advice. And so the idea is as soon as the problems arise, don't put it like your don't put your head in the sand and kind of like ignore it. Attack it, solve it right away cuz the next one's right behind it and then the faster you solve these problems, the faster you're going to move like your business forward. And, and the faster you solve these small problems, yeah. you're going to end up solving the bigger problems that yeah. you know is going to come a year mm-hmm. or two years from now, right? Mm-hmm. So if you do that early enough, you're training your mind and you're training yeah, yourself yeah. to like, this is normal. And my whole way here is to get wiser and smarter to solve the bigger problems. And that's how you make more money. So right? how did, what was like some of the, the early problems you ran into when you were just starting out with the, the shave ice truck? Oh, time, partnership. Um, I partner up with one of my best friends. Um, and, you know, we're both busy, right? Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, when you become partners with your friends, mm-hmm. you know, sometimes it's almost like marriage, right? Yeah. Um, Sometimes you have high expectation and you're doing more of this. Mm -hmm. So I've learned to uh, just to let go of anything issues in my head. Be like, you're not doing enough or you're not putting enough money. Right. 
which yeah. is not the case, but you know, when it's when you all get, perception, right? Exactly. And, yeah. So you just got to be understanding and got to do more than mm-hmm. that's kind of like my mentality. I think, I mean, so this is what I, I got some advice when I was about to get married. And I think this like that applies to partnerships too, is like yeah. whenever you're in like a marriage or a partnership is, is the 70, 30 rule where you're, you should expect to give 30 and receive, I mean, give 70 and 70. receive 30 back. Right. And so if both guys are trying to give 70 and receive 30 back. If they both are actually like doing their best, they're going to be out giving each other. But really, actually, what ends up happening is it's going to be 50-50 because you think you're giving 70, but you're really giving 50. You know? so yeah, I mean, if, you, if your mindset is like 50-50, it, you know, it's going to really sidetrack you on what you really need to do because you're focusing on the micro problems yeah. versus the macro problems, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah, 70-30 is good. I think 100-100, everybody got to give the 100% regardless. Well, the thing right? is, I mean, that, I mean, well, I mean like the, the amount of like, the, what you're the getting for the average, like the percentage, right? So, yeah. like, you're doing 70% of the work, but you're getting 30% of the benefits, right? Yeah, yeah. So, like, if you have, like, that mindset, but, I mean, if you're doing 100, it doesn't make sense, right? <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, so, yeah. And, like, yeah. So, that's just kind of, like, a general rule of thumb just for, like, as you're going into a partnership, just realize, like, you're, you're not doing it so that you can get something. You're doing it so that you can, like, give more. And then hopefully, like, the whole thing will grow as a, as a result. Yeah. So same thing with marriage, right? Like, you know, I, wanna, I don't want to get into, like, marriage. But it's mm. similar to partnership in business mm. and, and marriage. Like, if you're always trying to, like, uh, even out everything, yeah, it's not yeah. going to work, right? Yeah, because yeah. everybody... I don't see what you're doing on a daily yeah, basis, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just essentially mm-hmm. learning and growing, and I, that's mm-hmm. what I did. Like, I read a lot of books, um, mm-hmm. went to seminars, and mm-hmm. and that's what kind of led me to real estate, yeah, right? Because yeah, yeah. Hawaiian Shave Ice, I own a ramen restaurant. Okay. And in the pandemic hit, a lot of these other restaurants were closing, but we're actually doing very well during the pandemic oh, because wow. okay. we landed a um, a deal with uh, LA County, which, which is called Great Plates Program. Okay. We were feeding low income seniors wow. fifteen hundred meals to two thousand meals a week. Wow. On top of so you found a niche like this to kind of like capitalize on like during like that. exactly when everybody else is struggling you're like hey like, let's look into it, look at this problem let's solve it and then now you're actually thriving during like this pandemic yeah so we did very well I mean FEMA had a big budget to mm. um, give out for the seniors wow. that are in need right yeah. so we did that but prior to that we were just you know donating a lot of food during the mm-hmm. pandemic to mm-hmm. the city. Uh, the hospitals. And you know, I feel like that when you when you donate and you give out of like just goodwill, like things just naturally come back to you. You just don't. You yeah. just cannot ask for anything in return. Yeah, yeah. It just comes. You can't expect it, right? So like when you're giving, but if you expect something in return, like that's where like things get a little salty or sour, right? And you just end up stopping what your your mission is, right? Yeah, just because yeah. you're waiting for a return. But if you yeah. continue to do it without pay, yeah, that's when miracles happen, yeah. right? That's you know, what. I mean, so there's like an interesting piece because I think when you're giving, like, so you just started giving, 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 people notice you and then you got the opportunity for the FEMA and like the bigger opportunities because you started with the giving first. I, I think so. that's what really led us to for them to pick us because there was like thousands of applicants and yeah. they only picked 80 restaurants. Wow, wow. And then we got lucky there. And then we were so busy at that time that we had to hire more people during a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. And then we end up buying another restaurant, which is a sushi restaurant. Got it, yeah. So we're kind of expanding in a way. Yeah, yeah. And then at that time, we were like, I don't want to be in the restaurant industry. Like, I got, I got two kids already. I got, you know, I, I never get to see my wife and yeah, my family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to transition to real estate. Remember when the government said the pandemic is over? Yeah. yeah that was, yeah. I believe, at 2022. Okay. Right? Okay. So our our deal with uh, L.A. County ended. Mm-hmm. So I had to find ways to, like, do either stay in the restaurant industry, run two restaurants, mm-hmm. and who knows? And I've seen a lot of a lot of restaurants really close down. Yeah. Or uh, pivot to something pivot, different. Yeah. Piv- I mean, the key word here is pivot. I mean, even within, like, our, like, short time as, a, in, as investors and business owners, it's we're always pivoting. Sometimes it's a micro pivot. Sometimes it's, like, a, ma- a macro pivot. But... You're like really like changing according to like the opportunities and like the landscape that's around you. So like if interest rates, interest rates are low, flipping is great, right? If interest rates are high, it's a little bit more like difficult, yeah. et cetera, along. Yeah, that's why that's like what I said, we're always mm-hmm. constantly solving problems. Mm-hmm. And when uh, I got into real estate, I was like I had that mindset already. Like I had no experience in shave mm-hmm. ice, food trucks, mm-hmm. restaurants, being a chef. Mm-hmm. being a manager in a restaurant I mean I got all the hats right when yeah, you open yeah, up a yeah. restaurant 
but we still did it, right? Yeah, and we yeah, made yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. So that really changed my mindset of like, if I really get into it, anything in life, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like, I'll be okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. Because the norm is the norm. Because you right? have a track record of just solving difficult problems. So like when you enter a new like arena, <sighs> you know you're going to find like new problems, but you're ready because you already have like that, that mindset. Of, I was like, ready. Yeah, I, right? I was ready to fail, mm -hmm. fail forward and fail fast. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I was expecting that already. Um, but one thing that I really learned is get mentorships and mm. really learn from other people that's already done it yeah. and partner up. Right. Yeah. Cause when you partner down, it's like the yeah. blind leading the blind. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, and then it becomes almost like who's right. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. you guys both have your own perception of how things should work. Right. I think that the tendency when you first start is you partner down or equal because you feel like you don't add value to that guy above, or you don't want to give up too much profit percentage right Perfect. because or, yeah because you don't have a lot you don't have as much value because you're partnering up now you have to give up a bigger piece of the pie in order to leverage their experience but then in the long term scheme of things you'll lose money on this one deal but the experience and the and the wisdom you're going to get through that will will carry you on way farther than just this one deal 100 percent. that's why i have my mindset of like you know what i'm going to take a lot of mentorship mm -hmm. i'm going to learn from a lot of people mm -hmm. so i can build my value yeah, so when yeah, it's time yeah. for me to you know, meet the right partner, which I did, which is yeah. his name is Anthony Sandoval. Mm. Um, I know I can. I know Anthony. Yeah. 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 Anthony, I, you know, he's yeah. part of our reamplified mastermind. Okay. Right. Okay. So we started that. We're the co-founders. So, yeah. And then when I met him, like, what can I give value to this mm. guy where he's been in real estate for about eight years? Yeah, and I'm only yeah. been in real estate for a year. Okay. Right. And I know he, when you when you talk to him, he'll be like he, when he talks about me. He'll be like, man, Jason's a a, a go getter. He's <laughs> an action taker. And you know, to me, I'm like, all right, calculate a risk, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. all out. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm gonna give everything. Thing, I mean, you're always as a as an entrepreneur, you're always taking calculated risk. But then if you just keep calculating, 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 you never, <laughs> you never go anywhere, right? <laughs> like, yeah. So yeah, with calculated risk and action taking, yeah. it's like. You're going to move. You have to right. go hand in hand, right? Yeah. So you have yeah. to move the needle. And a lot of times, I think, when people are just starting out, they get this thing called analysis, analysis, analysis paralysis. paralysis, right? Where you're just thinking, like, what should I do? What should I do? And you're so scared to make a decision. Now, like, you don't make any decision, which is a decision in of itself. Too. That's why you got to get partners mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. will keep you accountable, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then being in a group. I know you're with Ryan Pinedas. Yeah, yeah. And that's an amazing group, right? Yeah. And I've always looked up, looked up, looked up to you guys and... Um, that's why I end up joining a bunch of, mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I should have joined Ryan Pineda's. No, uh, I mean, like, they're, and they're all good. They're, I've, yeah. joined, I've joined other ones in the past as well, too. So Yeah, so that's what I did, right? And I just kind of look up to these uh, communities, and, mm -hmm. and I'm like, man, what are they doing differently? And I just kind of, yeah. you know, I'll do my, you know, I'll be spying on, on, <laughs> on Instagram. Like, I just, I just copy that's that's a that's a beauty what about real you guys are doing right. That's the beauty about real estate investing is like there's it's not like you don't have to invent it from the scratch, right? Like we have the product, we have all the things. You just you can just copy what's been working for the last two hundred plus years, yeah. like and yeah. then just like it. So the principles and the foundations the same. Obviously, there's small tweaks and yeah, yeah. marketing or like sales and things, but in the general like concept of it is very simple. Yeah, pretty much the same as mm -hmm. the past hundred years, honestly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Basic principles. And, you know, who, who's the best copy person that you could be is like, who's going to be a winner, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's what I did. I've learned. I've taken like probably five or six mentorships. Okay. From, you know, Thatch Nguyen to okay. Love uh, that. Ryan Pineda. Love oh, not Ryan Pineda. Uh, um, sub two with Pace. Pace Marby. Marby. Love Pace. Um, and then I did a wholesaling um, mastermind. And I, you know, I was with Black Card, you know, okay. how to raise funds, yeah. you know, with Bridget Bridget Pennington. Pennington. Um, and now we're with Family Mastermind, okay. which is this shirt right here. Is that, here. Um, what's his face? Uh, Jerry Norton? No, this, oh. it, that, Matt, Matt Andrews started okay, okay. a mastermind of all coaches. Got it. Got so it. my coaches are all, my old coaches, the people okay. I look up yeah, to from yeah. directly and indirectly yeah. are in that program. Oh, you wow, know, Pace okay. Morby, Jamil, um, Bill Allen. Okay. Um, the CEO of Investor Lip, the CEO of uh, Preview. Okay. I mean, you know, the uh, one of the um, the owners of Preview. I mean, all these big CEOs, mm -hmm. right? So I remember one time when Ryan Pineda said, "I paid my friends so I can get in," right? Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, "What yeah. does that mean, right?" 
Like he literally paid his way in so he can meet people yeah. and learn high level stuff. Yeah. Right? I mean, that's the thing too, is like you have to get in that room. And so like there's, there's usually a price to entry. If you can like bring a deal or bring some value, but when you first start, you know, a lot of times the only thing you can bring is money. So yeah. you have to like, you have to buy your way. You have no skill. Deals, right? You have all the time. <laughs> But definitely the money is, yeah, you know, one yeah. thing that people are always looking for. But, mm-hmm. you know, now a lot of these mentorship or the mastermind of uh, of coaches, mm-hmm. everyone's such a go-giving mentality, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, Um, Everybody wants to help and they're not even looking for a price mm-hmm. tag, right? I feel like that's like kind of like the age of social media. I think prior to social media, at least from what I've heard, is like the the mindset of investors was everybody keep them things to themselves and like you don't ever share your secrets. But once somebody started doing a social media and giving, 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 saw how that was that abundance mindset actually helped them even more, even though like you feel like you're giving away your secrets. 100%. Now like it just became contagious and now everybody's just like in that mindset of like, let's just give each other and we'll grow together. Exactly. And that, that, that small mindset is really, it's not going to work anymore. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's what kind of led me to the assisted living, right? Okay. Um, I don't know about you guys, but probably 99% of the people that you would talk to and be like, mm-hmm. hey, uh, have you heard about assisted living and how do you get started? Yeah. And a lot of them, uh, friends, family, and people we don't know will hide secrets that they won't show you how to do this. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's like a big secret in this world where... M- if you're not a nurse or you're not in the medical industry, mm-hmm. you shouldn't learn yeah, yeah. <laughs> the assisted living where, man, I just want to be able to help and serve people, right? Mm-hmm. And, and serving the, uh, the elderly and the people who are in need is like, it's part of my DNA. Yeah. I so this year, that's what we've been kind of planning is the assisted living residential facilities. So when, when did you start investing in real estate? What year was that? Uh, I started in, uh, my first flip was November, 2022. Okay. So 2022 today, it's July, 2024. So it's been about a year and a half. So is that right? About right? Almost so, two years. Almost two years. Yeah. Okay. So the November, 2022, right? You did the first flip and then what was like the, what was like the progression after that? So I'm sorry, we've done so much this year. So let's rewind. So End of 2021, November was okay. my first flip. Okay. And okay. I went full-time in real estate June 2022. Okay. okay. So this last month was my exactly two years wow. of being in real full-time estate. Full-time real estate investing. Full-time, okay. right? Because I was still running the restaurants mm-hmm. and kind of trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Went to a lot of meetups and all that That's stuff. That's the thing, too, is like when you're always looking at evaluating opportunities... And so, like, you're kind of, like, juggling opportunities. And then when you see, like, one start to take off and see more promise, like, that's when you want to jump ship. But I think a lot of guys, they jump ship a little too early before, like, the opportunity is actually ready. They, they quit their job, yeah. right? They don't have enough money. Yeah. And um, yeah. You struggle, right, dude? Just because, like, you don't have the stability, now you're forced to make decisions that you wouldn't make if you had, like, less than, like, a foundation or yeah. some cash reserves, et yeah. cetera. Yeah. yeah, so time. I always tell people mm. you, need, you need time. Money and skills, right? Yeah. So what do you have out of the three? And if you don't have those three, don't quit your job, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you don't have your skill yet, yeah. don't don't go chasing your dreams, right? I like you, that. You need, yeah. you need to build yourself. And if you got the time, mm-hmm. then obviously when you can't, when you're not having enough sleep anymore yeah, because yeah. you have your nine to five yeah. and then you have few projects that you're running, then it's time to yeah. get into your... But uh, I, I like that. I mean, so like if you have like... Um, if you have time, right, then like that means like you don't have like you have time away from your job that you can spend towards your your new venture. So then like that's a lot more healthy. But if you don't have any time, then like that's it makes it very difficult. It's very difficult. So it's to a point where you can't take it anymore that you mm-hmm. gotta let go of your job yeah. because third money is starting to come in and yeah, starting to out yeah. outdo your regular job. Yeah, yeah. Then do your math. Yeah. If I'm working four hours here and I'm almost making the same amount of eight hours, yeah. what if I just double my four yeah, hours yeah. and I can spend more time on myself, my yeah, family, yeah, right? Yeah. Because you got to have that balance with, yeah. with family and, and I mean, and that's business. another thing too is like, so you have a wife and two kids. Yeah. And so how are you balancing all of Because like serial entrepreneurship, you guys are, are you sacrificing time with your family? What's like the challenge over there? So the beginning part of my real estate, it's mm-hmm. pretty tough, right? Just you know, like like every family, right? Mm-hmm. We're not perfect, but my wife is very understanding. You know, she came, she saw me from the bottom, kind of raised back up when mm-hmm. I started working in sales, and um, she's really believed in me, right? So you gotta have that number one supporter, yeah, yeah. as your spouse or your partner, yeah, 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 or it will not 
work out, right? Yeah, yeah. So we had that understanding. So the first a year, year and a half, she knew I was building, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And building a startup is not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's really not. Building two or three startups almost at the same time, even though one is seasoned enough, uh, it's very, very difficult. Yeah, I think the very the beginning is always the hardest. And it's always like, because you don't have like the employees, you don't have any, like you don't have you're money. Everything yeah, yourself. You have to do everything yourself. And so you're spending a, an like outsized amount of time in the very beginning with very undersized profits because you don't have any traction yet, right? So it's such a challenge in the very beginning when you're starting. So you got to do everything yourself, yeah. right? So that's what we did. Like mm-hmm. literally, I did everything ourselves. When I partner up with Anthony Sandoval, mm-hmm. um, like, it was just me and him in the office. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And now we kind of grew our team, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. um, from sales to marketing to project managers. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We have about, I think, 12 projects running right now wow, in LA. Wow, awesome. Um, and then we, we own a bunch of rentals mm-hmm. for eventually converting to assisted living. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, like, you've had kind of like, I wouldn't say like a meteoric rise where you started in 2021. Now you've done like a bunch of flips, wholesale yeah. leads, sales, yeah. burrs, yeah. As residential assisted living. What do you think is like separated you from having all the success versus like other people like in the in the same space? I, I think I always tell people uh, it's very important to find a deal, uh-huh, right? Because uh-huh. you can't grow mm-hmm. when you're not learning on new things in mm-hmm. real estate, right? So I got good at really acquiring properties. Okay, okay. And then second, I got good at raising capital. Got it. Um, Those are the two like lifeblood of an uh, investor. You right? cannot have one without the other. Deals. But when, you, when if I tell you I give you hundred million dollars in, but you gotta go buy properties in the next seven days, <laughs> what would you do? Yeah. You're gonna you gonna find a lot of properties, right? But the biggest problem here on growth is you know is is the money money mm-hmm. and time mm-hmm. so we've kind of figured out where we have project managers gc's accounting team that's running our projects in the same time uh you know we're putting a little bit of work kind of managing them mm-hmm. and then we're always raising capital so that really helped us really catapult our business to where so we you're are focus- today. i mean you're the th- i like this because you're focusing on the key like um Profit indicator or profit movers is Correct. like the finding the deals and finding the money. I think a lot of guys sometimes they get concerned about setting up their taxes or their LLCs or like different things. Even yeah. like starting up, like let's say like social media sometimes can be a distraction. Yeah. But if you're not focusing on the deals and the money, that's really like the life love of any investor. Yeah. So we tell our staff, um, if it's not money making activities mm-hmm. for me and Anthony, yeah, we're gonna need you to take care of these duties. Yeah. yeah. Right. And same thing with my wife. Like, she handles a lot of the back end stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it's already tough as it is to, you know, uh, yeah. be at home and taking yeah. care of the kids yeah. and then running our, you know, my assistant and working with her and mm-hmm. all that stuff. So it's like, it's a lot of work for her. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But at the same time, you got to have that partnership, right? Yeah. My yeah. partner at home and my partner at work is Anthony. Yeah. So. We're kind of just carrying each other's weight it, and, yeah. and, and helping each other, right? Yeah. So that's how it's kind of working. What out is like your so? How does like your the residential assisted living? How does that work? And what's like the, the thoughts behind that? So beginning is this year. So we have our mastermind, okay. right? So and the mastermind is kind of when you learn like the process for the so residential exactly. Assisted so we had our mastermind. So the backstory here is how are we going to cash flow mm-hmm. with this high interest rate, mm. right? And we're like, definitely not long-term rentals in California. Yeah. You could be at 1% interest rate yeah. and still not cash flow, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so we got to go really find ways to save some of our deals, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so that led me to learning, you know, midterm rental, short-term rental, but it's not very lucrative mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because everyone's doing it, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a high competition. And so how are we going to solve this problem, either transitional housing or we can do a facility for the elderly mm-hmm. or um, there's a lot of residential facilities available. Okay. So that's what led me to building a team of healthcare consultant operators to grant writers to fund manager. Mm. I built a team where... If I would not exist today, mm-hmm. they can run this and streamline mm-hmm. it and, and, and operate it without me, right? Um, so a lot of our mastermind students are involved with our projects. Got it. And I've been kind of working with them, training them on uh-huh. how to get things 
uh, operating. So to, for the viewers, residential assisted living is you're, you're buying a house in the residential community, many bedrooms and bathrooms, and Correct. you're having like, uh, let's say, er- elderly care in there and having like nurses kind of run the facility for you. The benefits are it, cash flow is higher than like a normal like long-term rental. Yeah, so you never have to really, you are your own tenant. Mm-hmm. Right. Because we own the real estate and we own the operational. Mm-hmm. Right. So we never have to worry about evicting someone because it's very tough in California. Yeah. Like yeah, a lot of it's yeah. not landlord friendly. Same with, right? same with Hawaii. We're in right Hawaii now, too? We're, it's like we're probably going on a year right now on an eviction. So it, oh, it's yeah. just it just that's what it is. And, so, and it's yeah. tough. Right. Because mm-hmm. it's not like entrepreneurs are have heavy pockets. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they got hit hard, too. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what led us to opening up our two facilities right now. One is a, a residential facility for elderly, and the other one's gonna be a drug treatment center. Okay. So I don't know if you guys ever heard of Malibu Passage. Um, it's like a high-end drug treatment. So okay. Okay. Um, if you're having alcohol and drug abuse, and you, know, um, and you have good insurance, um, you can stay at these facilities. Okay, okay. And the insurance pays $2,000 a day. Wow, that's a nice big check, paycheck. Yeah. But I mean, that does, I mean, that's not on profit, right? You're paying your, like, your nurses and some overhead and different things. Oh, correct. But, but so, still, yeah, like, the margin there is like enough where it does, it sounds like it makes a lot of sense. Correct, correct. But you got, you're hiring a clinical, uh, clinical director where she mm-hmm. literally handles everything. So mm-hmm. um, it's like a process. Um, it's, it's finding the right people too because we found uh, one, of my, one of our partners that he knows how to start facilities from A to Z nationwide. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So obviously, on a brand new industry, we're gonna get lost on how to get this started. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But if you have someone that's opened up fifteen facilities in less than two years, yeah, yeah, then yeah. I I would feel conf- confident to like, yeah, yeah. you do this thing. We'll we'll yeah, do the capital yeah, raising. Yeah. We'll do the other stuff that yeah. that that helps this business. So we, you know, I guess it's finding finding the right people would be definitely a big part of mm-hmm, of mm-hmm, this journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I mean, I think that's so key. I think I, from my short term as an investor and entrepreneur, I find that like key relationships really can like supercharge your journey. And like, just like they can make your life easier or like, like bad relationships can make your life like horrible. So it's just like finding those key relationships to like partner with or to like come alongside you, like so, so powerful, like in like becoming successful as an entrepreneur or investor. Hey, if, if this is what I've learned in life and it's been really working out for us, right? It's, you know, people say it's coincidence. Mm-hmm. It's not like if you're intentional on what you're looking for, yeah, you're gonna yeah. go find it. Got it. Hundred percent, either for money, people, uh, houses, to anything. Mm-hmm. You just gotta really put in your head, be like, I-, I gotta go find this, and I got mm-hmm. till end of the week to find this, and you will find it, right? Um, and that's been happening for me. Like, oh, it's not a coincidence. It's just you know, it's working out because it's like you're you say give yourself a deadline and just put an intention on it, and then like you just make the take the steps toward those two Correct. things, and then like it just almost like magically happens as long as you're taking action towards that 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 goal. And and you know, should I'm 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 a dreamer, bro. I'm like I'm a visionary. Like mm-hmm. I've never been the operator. I've never been the the person putting systems, I, mean, I would I would love to, right? Because mm-hmm. that's how successful companies become, right? Mm-hmm. Having the systems, right? Um, but I, me and Anthony's been the visionary in so our, our like business. Double visionaries, you'd say. Double so. visionaries, but you know we we have a disc test. You know what a disc test yeah, is, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm a D and a C. He's an I and an S. Mm-hmm. So we we complement each other's mm. because. What your strength is is not my strength. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What my yeah. strength is is not your strength. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we kind of kind of work but together. I mean, so like the, the whole thing is like there's a visionary integrator for those of you that are yeah, not aware. Right? So like the visionaries kind of sets the vision. They kind of lead a charge. The integrators, the guys who's handling the day to day, the operations, and kind of like making the shit move. But at the same time, I feel like we all have a little bit of visionary and integrator in all, in all of us, 100%. right? We maybe like lean more towards one. But when you're first starting as an entrepreneur, you have to be both, right? Because <laughs> yeah, you're you're doing all the work too while having the vision. So like that's kind of what launches off the ground before you can kind of give away the integrator piece. I I really think at first you only pick up one, <laughs> and you come to find out you're lacking the other one, right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. So when you're lacking the other one. It's either you continue to become a visionary and you, you and you lose this and you mm-hmm. fail, mm-hmm. or come to realize, hey, I gotta I gotta start working on my integrator, integrator yeah. side, yeah. right? And to me, I'm like, oh, that's you know, that happened to me multiple times. Mm-hmm. You know, starting a business, kind of figure out, oh, I want to bring in more sales and do this, mm-hmm. and like, oh, I gotta figure out the process. And, yeah, yeah. You know, so 
it's a lot of learning process in entrepreneurship. I mean, you just got to really look back and be like, how could I have done this better? Mm -hmm. You know, it's been a bad week. I think it's going to get better next week. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that, things always run in my head when, <laughs> when things go bad. Have like, you guys ever had any deals go bad? The oh, yeah. Um, I've lost I've lost three or four deals uh, during the interest rate hike. You mean like lost money on them? Lost money on them, right? Mm -hmm. um, I've done about 20 plus flips. Okay. in less than two years and um and the interest rate hike mm -hmm. messed us up right just because during that ju that june when they raised the interest rate nobody was buying because mm -hmm. they were waiting for it to go down yeah yeah so it's almost like this like stalling waiting period that was happening and it led to the uh the holidays mm. <laughs> and no, you know, no one's buying in the holidays. Right. Yeah, yeah. So you're kind of forced to like, Oh man, I've, I've been holding this for Extra six or seven <laughs> months yeah. at that point. Right. So, so yeah. I got to sell it for a loss or yeah. hold or it for what? longer. Right. And which you're bleeding money every month by your, your carrying costs. Exactly. And you know, that interest mm -hmm. rate at, you know, used to be at seven, eight percent on a hard money right now is about 11, 12%. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. It's, it's, I think the only people making money in this industry, is the banks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, yeah they, just, they can't lose, right? The banks, lose, like, in good times yeah. or bad times, like, they're, yeah. they're secure. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, it's, it, it, it was super blessed because, you know, just, you know, we're, we're still positive, you know, this year. And mm -hmm. um, we picked up seven, eight million dollars worth of real estate wow. in December. Wow. Um, and that's only six properties. And they're, like, between one million to two million dollar mm -hmm. purchase price. Mm -hmm. And... Three of them are going to be in the market this month, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then one will be next month. So there's, we're moving, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're hoping that interest rate will go down during this whole action thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, we're hoping for that too. I mean, like the thing is, we just had a whole bunch of properties just hit the market recently. But I mean, like, we're just gonna like we're we'll deal with the high interest rates. But if we could just like wait, let's say like four or five months, and like we feel like that's when like the interest rates will probably come down. And, like prices possibly could go up depending on, like on the. There's a lot of factors at that point, but like it's it could go down or it might not go down yeah, at all, yeah. right? Or it might even go up. Yeah, right? yeah. we just we just never know. Yeah. So we gotta really be we gotta be prepared because a yeah. lot of people are kind of losing cash flow yeah. now because you know mm -hmm. economy is really really yeah. not that well right now. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's a combination of things there is like the high interest rates but also like the people have less money in general so like yeah. there's like across the board it's harder as like a business owner or an investor to be profitable because of like all the different like um situation or like um, economic yeah. factors so. yeah and everything's so expensive here in, in california in hawaii too man yeah i don't know how thing. you guys yeah. afford here right? no i mean i don't know how people afford here either like you know actually when i was first starting i was like i never was planning to own a house because like it's just stupid to like be able to afford one yeah, but yeah. now as an investor now we got some like some like income different things were allowed us to have like this opportunities but as a normal person working at w2 like i don't know how you afford a house in hawaii yeah you gotta have mm -hmm. you know i i respect these uber drivers and mm -hmm. You know, doing side hustle stuff or whatever it is, online store that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Like, you got to do these extra stuff, right? Just to survive, right? It's so sad, yeah. Because, you know, it seemed like everything's going up. Man. My grocery, mm -hmm. my, I used to go to Costco, and, like, I'll spend a couple hundred dollars. But now with having two kids, like, I swear, like, we're just here for toilet paper. And <laughs> we spent yeah. 500 bucks because yeah. everything looks like they're on sale, yeah. <laughs> right? No, I, I, I did. My, me and my wife do the same thing. <laughs> it's like, we're only here, you know? You see these memes on... on the, one, the, the most um, dangerous one is Target. So whenever my wife wants to go to Target, I'm like, oh, no, we're going to go I, away with, like, a big... <laughs> I don't like going to Target because I buy... <laughs> everything looks so nice in there. Uh, especially me, like, I, you know, I'm, you know when, when I like kind of designing, picking the colors mm -hmm. and, you know, like, oh, that's a, that's a nice furniture. That's pretty mm -hmm. cool. Like, I think it will look good in that wall, right? Mm -hmm. So when I look at stuff in, in Target and even Costco, like, I feel like I want to buy everything in there. <laughs> yeah, Like, yeah. I just found out in Costco that they have a shed that turns into a, that has a bar inside. Oh, like, a, like an outdoor shed? Outdoor that's... shed. I think it's a metal shed, oh, wow. right? But they have this window in the front oh, and wow. then these, these, <laughs> These like uh, uh, liquor racks, and I'm like, add a little thing to your backyard. Your yeah, or something, and so. like, man, like, I swear, it'll probably take take <laughs> me like a whole week to build this, but for a couple thousand dollars, yeah, yeah, you know, you can get this. So that's yeah, you know, everything, everything cool now you can buy in Costco and and and, and Target, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, but when you guys are losing money on these flips, like, what's kind of like going through your mind, and what's like the the thought process? So, either you quit the business now. 
mm-hmm. pay back that losses mm-hmm. or bounce back mm-hmm. and figure out other ways to be smarter on underwriting, right? Break, t- say, say that again. So. so either you quit now. Okay. When you take the, we're taking the losses, you like, just give up and like just you're give, end, give. End, the, end, the, end the business and the dream. Yeah, end the dream, end the business and do something different, which a lot of investors did mm-hmm. during this past two years. Yeah. Or figure it out, right? Figure, figure it out yourself and bounce back and then get another deal. Before, I used to be happy with like forty to $60,000 in profit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and come to realize that there's deals out there for... A hundred to two hundred thousand yeah, dollar, yeah. you know, profit. So yeah. in case you need to cut some prices, yeah, you still got still enough meat in the bone. Yeah. So now a lot of our deals are between a hundred to three hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollar profit. So it's it's really safe, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's where we kind of pivoted to, at least for me. So it's almost like a skills change where you like, you just gotta find better deals because like if you have better deals like the you can you can survive like a, a downturn or like a like let's say unexpected things that could happen and pop up. Yeah, you just look at you know how how long these houses are selling in this neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Like we're only picking areas that are hot. Uh, days on a market it's like thirty to forty five days, right? Mm-hmm. So they're literally putting in the market. Mm-hmm. getting sold in like 30 to 45 days. Yeah, yeah. Those are the only places that we are focusing on flipping, right? You know, Orange County, right? Uh, everything by the water, which is Mar Vista, Santa Monica, mm-hmm. Venice, all that stuff. Those are higher price point, but there's buyers there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you don't got to deal with someone that's, uh, you know, not sure if they're going to get approved or, mm-hmm. you know. There's a lot of cash <laughs> buyers over there. A yeah. lot of cash yeah. buyers um, we have two projects right now in Mar Vista, which is uh, in a Silicon Beach of Southern California. Um, it's where Netflix, YouTube, mm-hmm. and all these big tech companies. And then when you when you flip houses there, yeah. you get literally a lot of cash offers, yeah. like a lot of stock options, cashing yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, as we thought about playing in that in that um, that price points. Just like the the challenge is like if you. Do want to do a price drop, right? You're not dropping it by 50 grand. Not, you're, not, you're dropping you're like 10, 200 you're, grand. Your like 10,000 like, is not <laughs> enough, yeah, yeah. right? Uh, you got to go 25, 25,000, 200 50, sometimes. Like, yeah. you know, and so, I mean, the, the challenge is like the, I feel like a lot of those deals that we're seeing is there's a big fat profit margin, but it's also higher risk because your holding costs are a lot Correct. longer, right? Correct. And then at the same time, like when there is a shift in like the, let's like say the economy or like the sentiment, now like there's a bigger chance of like a downside as well too. So I mean like, but I mean, it's obviously like there's also a lot more money to be made there because let's say Correct. it goes the other way where like, okay, like Martin sentiment goes up. Now instead of making 500, you can like make a million dollars on a single deal. 100%. That's why we're able to do multiple deals, right? Mm-hmm. It's just your batting average got to be mm-hmm. really, really high, right? Mm-hmm. Three, 400 in, 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 in real estate, you're definitely not going to do a thousand, right? Mm-hmm. But if you batting range 700 to 800, like mm-hmm. that means yeah. that seven, eight out of 10 yeah. is profitable yeah. and the other yeah. two is not, right? Because mm-hmm. you're always going to lose money on a deal the longer you do this mm-hmm. business, mm-hmm. right? It's just a matter of what's your batting average. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we got a whole team, like we have, a designer, we have project manager, we have a mm-hmm. GC, mm-hmm. we have our staging company. They all kind of work together mm-hmm. to to give us the direction. Mm-hmm. You know what's going to be selling in like three to six months, right? Yeah, yeah. So you I mean you have the kind of like inside track because you have like industry experts Correct. who are like helping you. So it's not just you relying on your things like that every day. <laughs> I mean, I, if I have thirty six hours a day, <laughs> <laughs> then I could try to do everything, but I've come to realize in this business, you know, mm-hmm. the only way for you to scale is to have the smart people, the talented yeah. people in yeah. your group, right? What is like, what does like your day look like? What's the focus of, of Jason? So my day, um, I wake up at 7 a.m. every day and then I what? end my day at 10 p.m. And you just go to sleep? The- I go s- straight to sleep. Um, but, you know, doing a startup, you're, you're literally working 12 hours a day mm-hmm. to 14 hours a day. So it's nonstop. So I have meetings literally every morning from our team meeting, our huddle, to our, um, our PMLs and our, mm-hmm. you know, our contractors. So we have mm-hmm. meetings you know, in the morning mm-hmm. all the way to noon. Mm-hmm. And then I'm on the field from 12 to 5. When you say on the field, you mean like you're at projects? 
projects, checking out properties, mm-hmm. right? So like the morning is like seven to twelve is all meetings. Because like, the traffic. <laughs> like, okay, okay. Get, smart, get, smart. Yeah. Get get that traffic <laughs> out of the way because I'm gonna lose time. Okay. You know, traveling and after twelve, that's when I really get on the road. Okay. Right. Um, and then from five to eight is that's when I work on our assisted living, which oh, is called reamplified care. Okay, okay. So I work with that from five to eight, and then from eight I go home, spend mm-hmm. time with the kids, have dinner, mm-hmm. and they put them to sleep at ten. So it's a yeah. full day for you, like that. From the seven, like you're you're working hard. Like, are you working on the weekends? Sundays I don't work Sundays. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's church day, mm-hmm. family day. I love that. Right? Yeah. Um, and then sometimes we go to the park and mm-hmm. you know play soccer with my son. Yeah. Um, but on Saturdays I do work, um, it's still, it's like so, half it's a day, still to get like done. half yeah. a day, yeah. like half a day. Um, just because I, I have to have a balance. Yeah. 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 I like that. It, yeah. I, it, it, because when you don't have balance, it, you get burnt out, right? You don't, yeah. you, you, you're not just hurting yourself. You're hurting the people around you. Mm-hmm. Right. What do you mean by that? Because if you don't spend time with the people that you love, mm-hmm. I don't have the whole life to be with them, right? Especially my mm-hmm. kids. Um, I know a lot, a lot of my, my friends have older kids, so they always tell me, like, hey, <laughs> enjoy with your kids now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So I try to be fair, at least for the business side. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I, I try to focus more and talk to my kids like, hey, daddy mm-hmm. got to go to work on a podcast this morning. Mm-hmm. I'll be back in a few hours, right? Mm-hmm. And then we'll have lunch. I, it's about communicating with my kids. And, and sometimes I bring my son with me. Yeah, yeah. I brought my son with me at our last event in, uh, I think, in Long Beach or both of our big events. Um, I spoke, you know, obviously we hosted a two-day seminar and there's like two, 300 people in our, our event. Awesome. I brought my son in the front because I want him to get Exposed to it. Exposed, yeah. and I take him to work on the weekends, on mm-hmm. Saturdays, mm-hmm. when we do our workshops and our 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 site visits on. That's the weekends. like the best education. Like I wish it were like as a kid, like the you know he's not gonna appreciate it now, but like looking back later, he's like, wow, like, I got exposed to all of these opportunities. That's all gonna stay in his subconscious mind, and I truly believe that's all gonna click later. Mm-hmm. What his passion is gonna be, right? Yeah, yeah. Um. So same thing with you and you know, everything that we, you know, you, you grew up on, right? Mm-hmm, it's mm-hmm. all coming back. But like, oh, yeah. that's why I like these kind of things because yeah, I, yeah. you know, my dad likes it or my mom likes yeah, it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm kind of training them little by little. Mm-hmm. Um, my son's a little softy. Um, he's very sweet, and and my daughter's like that. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, <laughs> you're, you're my, my daughter's running the company. <laughs> 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 so it, it's kind of cool because they have different personalities. But yeah, we're just kind of having fun. And I told mm-hmm. him, hey, you know, I'll be working in Hawaii, but, you know, yesterday we went to North Shore all day. Mm-hmm. Um, and today we're going to go go out and, and possibly go shopping. So, yeah, just. And then the company is running while you guys are on vacation. Everything is. <laughs> yeah. Is, you yeah. got a team and yeah, everything. Yeah. Our, our, our teams. Mm-hmm. I told them, hey, just call me if there's any urgent mm-hmm. things. And, um, you know, this weekend we're going to be filling up our furniture at our drug treatment center. Oh, wow. Okay. So we're putting furniture there and I'm. I'm doing a lot of the planning over here without mm-hmm. really them knowing. So I'm yeah. just kind of setting like everything on the, on up. On the for side, you're kind of like working behind the scenes. Correct, correct, yeah. right. Um, so, yeah, I would try to make it work, but definitely work-life balance is a must. Yeah. Do you ever yeah. get like stressed out or overwhelmed from all the different like projects and responsibilities I do. you have? I do. Yeah. Um, I do. I mean, I, I, feel, I get stressed out sometimes too. So I'm mean, I just wondering like what, what I do you do to like cope with I, I I do. Some, you know, there's... there's few times that i just balling like mm. i can't do this anymore right mm-hmm. just 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 because when you're just having a bad day and mm-hmm. and your emotions just kick in and nothing's winning today and tomorrow right yeah. it's like you feel so yeah. defeated like i'd literally cry my wife like i can't do this anymore and, and my wife's like no you you got this right um but other than that the next mm-hmm. day is like it's a brand new day. Let me start over it's again. Like that, it's like nothing happened yesterday, <laughs> right? You're like crying your tears. Yeah. That is not going to solve it, right? Mm-hmm. So the next day, it's like, it's very emotional, right? Yeah. Um, but lately, it's been like less mm-hmm. emotional, right? Because you're almost numb, bro. Yeah. You're almost numb with like all the things that's being happening. To well, handle, it's like normal yeah, now, Yeah, being able right? to handle those problems. Actually, so I was talking with Panetta. And he was saying, like, the, each level that you go into, you're dealing with, like, a different level of problems. Correct. When I first started, I was, like, stressed out, trying to raise $20,000. I'm like, 
how can it ever get this much? There's such a huge amount of Monty to climb, right? Yeah. Now we're trying to raise like a million dollars. Yeah, twenty thousand like, dollars. It's just a tech, uh, tech. It's a text message, right? <laughs> but <laughs> Back I, then, like no, but yeah, no, calls, it's so you make, hard. Yeah, it's, you but when you first call. started, it's like a mountain. Because your 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 mindset is like I can't do it. Like yeah, I, it's yeah. gonna be impossible. But where, like, if you change that mindset, yeah. Like, but I mean, it's, it's, it's all, it's like, so it's, it's all relative on your levels. And so now I've leveled up my game, my personhood. So now 20,000 is not a lot. And so like, now I'm struggling with the million dollar raises, but then let's say like in 10 years from now, I'll be oh like, yeah. million is like, there's a text message. A like, million you know, dollars? So. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, it's honestly, the more people that you really meet, the mm-hmm. more, I think the, the more information you can get. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you can learn from a lot of people mm-hmm, from mm-hmm. their connections. Mm-hmm. So and it's just sometimes it's just having conversations and just being around them. It's like you kind of like absorb it. It's almost like it's not like you never. It's not something that's like super audible. It's just like the way that they view it or the way that they p- describe something. Then like you just like you kind of take away things from that just from like the like being near it. So oh man, I just mm-hmm. man, I I copy everybody man from Grant Cardone to Ryan mm-hmm. Pineda to Pace Morby. Mm-hmm. I mean every I just copy what they say like yeah. and 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 look confident, right? Yeah. And then when I try it, it's like, oh, shoot, it worked. <laughs> right? It's like it's, you're, you're literally testing out the waters, uh-huh. you know, to see if this is your style, right? Yeah. And, and it worked, it worked. If it doesn't work, I'm like, all right, maybe I got to do it one more time, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I just, I, just, I just look I look up to a lot of people, bro. Like, Me too. Like, I, mean, I'm I have inspired, a lot of heroes. I'm inspired with anything, like, literally from poor people to, you know, mm-hmm. I look at them like, oh, my God, like, you know, they're in the street, like, they're, yeah. they're homeless, like, but they're... They're alive, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Think about that. If if I was in my situation, I'd be dead right now, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. So and then, and then someone that's really successful and be like, oh man, what are they doing differently? What are they yeah. doing right? Everybody wrong? has a part of their life that you can look up to, right? There's some parts where they have like more than others, but then there's always an aspect to their life where you're like, wow, like I'm very like amazed and inspired by the way you did this part of your you, life. You, yeah, you just gotta stay humble and really look up to people. Like drama is really not kind of walk away from drama. <laughs> like there's so much drama in the real estate business and it's just because maybe people focus what, on what do you mean by that like what kind of drama uh, do you? you you know like just you know gossip mm-hmm. you know because when you have a community we have a yeah. community yeah. my community is so amazing like like we have about 35 mastermind members in our community um and there's literally no drama right mm. but when i see like st- i hear stories from other communities like yeah, oh yeah, it's like yeah. all right it's normal like every f- community it's almost like a family like every family has a drama right yeah yeah yeah. um but as long as your grandpa and grandma which is the head of that family is like cracking whip like hey it's not allowed here yeah yeah. set the expectations Mm -hmm. set the foundation right um then everyone will run yeah yeah. it's they kind of follow the leader right so whatever tone that the leader is setting a lot of everybody else is kind of like me it's okay to gossip we should gossip more or don't gossip let's get our stuff done yeah so. just focus on making money focus mm-hmm. on helping other people and mm-hmm. for, focus on grow, growth on yourself mm-hmm. right I like I like simple it's focus on making money helping other people and focusing on growth on yourself that, that, simple, simple that, that's simple. it and, and, and you focus on bad things about other people mm-hmm. like okay that'll probably take me five seconds mm-hmm. like I don't want to be that person, yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> but not like, oh, why are they doing this? Yeah. They're like, oh, they should be. Th- I got, I got no time <laughs> talking about other people's failures. Yeah. Like maybe I could use that as a lesson, but yeah. not, yeah, like make fun of them or. And a lot of times it's just where you put your time and energy and your focus. And it sounds like for you, you're just always focused on moving things forward, and you don't, you don't care about looking stupid. You don't care about making mistakes. You're, you're just a go getter, and you're willing to push. And that's why you've had such yeah. a short. I mean, such a, mon- a huge amount of success in such a short period of time. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, when they say fake it till you make it, like, like when I went to that stage, like, mm-hmm. yeah, just, I, just I didn't do. know what to say. Yeah. Like, I didn't know, but I just did it, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. You know, just practice and and mm-hmm. and be confident, um, and then I did it, yeah, right? Yeah, and then um, learning new stuff, right? And then kind of implementing it, like mm-hmm. pretend I'm like just. Uh, an expert on it yeah, yeah. and it works out like oh cool right so just a little bit of confidence right just to kind of help you mm-hmm, you know mm-hmm. um so you can look a little bit better right yeah yeah no i mean a little confidence goes a long way but i think it's also like the this, the confidence is built of like your previous track record of what you've done so i mean if you put in the work and you solve things and you're willing to overcome challenges yeah when you're going into like an unknown area you have confidence because like you're like hey i've done this before yeah whereas like if you always kind of like run away or things like it's hard to have confidence in the new section because you ran away from like the old the old areas i like to end the week i you know kind of 
always look back and like, what could I have done a, be- a little bit better? Mm. And then what really worked out for me, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. I always like to reflect, you know, the prior week mm-hmm. or the prior month mm-hmm. so I can make some improvement this month. Because mm-hmm. if you don't, like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're going to be yeah. the same and you won't be able to grow, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that's what's been kind of working out for me. So, yeah. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. So, I mean, last question for you. If people are just kind of just starting out, they see, like, the uh, Jason Santos, they, they've seen, like, your rise, what you've accomplished in such a short period of time. If you had a one piece of advice to give them, what would you say? Uh, this is not a get. I got two. This is not a get rich quick. It literally takes time to build mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, the inner self, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and it's, you know, if you're ready to really be prepared to become mm-hmm. successful, mm-hmm. you're going to have so many challenges. Yeah, right? yeah. And then second, I really, uh, I really encourage you to learn from a mentor, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and that's what I've really, one of the big foundation of my business is learning from other people. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, you know, I've taken a lot of mentorship program and I look up to a lot of people and, and, and I still do. And and now our mentors are, we're side by side in the same mastermind, right? So it's kind of it. cool where, it. you know, I used to be in the back of the room and now, yeah. I'm, you know, I'm in the stage with them, yeah, right? Yeah. So, yeah, it just, Really, just not get rich quick. It's it takes time with this economy. A lot of people are quitting, so be prepared to uh, sharpen up your skill. You know, really utilize your money effectively, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And fail, fail less, right? Love so, it. So, yeah, super excited to great, uh, great advice, great yeah, advice. Get, get give more knowledge to other people. I mean, you know, this is this is what we do. Like we're we're a service provider to a lot of entrepreneurs. Hundred percent. Yeah. So if people want to reach out to you or find more about you, where can they find yeah, you? Yeah, go find me on Instagram, Jason SoCal Investor. Um, and our website is reamplifiedacademy.com. And uh, yeah, we got, we got lots of websites, but I think you'll be able to find it on my Instagram. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming on today. I appreciate it. Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. Thank you. See you guys.